I'm super excited to be joined by Mr. Witt of Fort Bend Tutoring YouTube channel here. We're gonna be going through six questions, alternating one at a time, talking about how to graph these rational functions. You're gonna be learning how to find the asymptotes, whether it's a slant asymptote or a horizontal asymptote, how to find the vertical asymptotes, the x-intercepts, y-intercepts, how to do sign analysis, how to get a good sketch of your graph. Let's jump into number one. If you want the free worksheet, it's down in the description below. I'll have a link there for you, but you can also pause the video if you like. Number one, we're looking at f of x equals 3x squared plus 4x minus 4 over the quantity x squared minus 1. Now, when you're graphing rational functions, the first thing that you're going to want to do is factor it as much as you possibly can. And the reason that we do that is because if we have factors in the numerator and the denominator that cancel out, right, then that tells us that there's going to be a hole in the graph, meaning like a removable discontinuity, like, like so. So here, if we factor the numerator, you can see that factors to 3x, and let's see, this looks like it's going to be plus 2 and minus 2. Okay, so now that we have it completely factored, f of x you can think of as like your y value. What we want to do is look for those factors. There's nothing that cancels numerator and denominator, so you don't have any holes in the graph. The next thing I would do is I would set the denominator's factors equal to 0 to find your vertical asymptotes. So if we do that, we just say x plus 1 equals 0, Subtract 1 from both sides, and same thing here if we say x minus 1 equals 0, add 1 to both sides. You can see that your vertical asymptotes are going to be at negative 1 and positive 1. And so let's go ahead and sketch those in right now. So x equals negative 1. I like to do it as I'm working through the problem so I can kind of see it coming together. Okay, the next step is to analyze. Do we have a slant asymptote, a horizontal asymptote, and you know what would that asymptote be? Well, what you want to do is you want to look at the highest power term in the numerator. This is like a 1, because 1 times anything is itself. And that highest power term in the denominator, and if it's a tie, such as it is in this one, you can see x squared and x squared, what you get is you get the ratio of the coefficients in front of those uh, two terms. So it's going to be y equals 3 over 1, or you can say y is equal to 3. So let's go ahead and sketch in that horizontal asymptote. Now you might be saying, Mario, well, what happens if the numerator's power is greater than the denominator's? Well, in that case, you're going to have a slant asymptote, and we'll come across those in this video. What happens if the denominator's degree is higher than the numerator? Say this was like a 5. <laughs> then what happens is you have y equals 0, or the x-axis is going to be your horizontal asymptote. Okay, so the next step now, we've got our asymptotes. We want to find out where does it cross the x-axis and the y-axis. Now, there's a couple different ways to do this. One way to do it is you can make a table like so. You can say if I put 0 in for x, I'm going to be solving for the y-intercepts. If I put 0 in for y, you're going to be solving for the x-intercepts. So you set that opposite variable equal to 0. So let's go ahead and put 0 in for x. If we put 0 in for x, you can see that all these terms that have an x in them, they're going to cancel out. So you're just going to end up with negative 4 over negative 1, which is positive 4. So that means that it's going to cross the y-axis at 1, 2, 3, positive 4 right there. Okay, now if we set the y value equal to 0 to find the x-intercepts, what I want you to realize is that the only way that this is going to be equal to 0 is if the numerator of the fraction is equal to 0 and not simultaneously the denominator. So what I mean by that is like if you were to take this, these factors in the numerator, set them equal to 0, those are going to be your x-intercepts because if, say for example if I set x plus 2 equal to 0, we get negative 2, right? Well, you can see if I put negative 2 in here, that's going to make this 0. 0 times anything is 0. These are not going to be 0. So you're going to get 0 over something that's not 0, which is equal to 0. So that's kind of just like a shortcut. Set the numerators equal to 0 to find the x-intercepts. So we get negative 2, which is right here. And if we set this equal to 0, we're going to get 2 thirds. So that's going to be right here, just a little shy of 1. So now we've got some key points, our y-intercepts and x-intercepts. We've got our asymptotes. The last thing we want to do uh, is to find out you know, what happens when you approach these vertical asymptotes from the right side and from the left side. Because you can cross a horizontal asymptote. You can cross a slant asymptote. You cannot cross a vertical asymptote. Because if you did, say for example, if it came out to negative 1, then you would be dividing by 0, which is undefined. right? So what happens when you approach those vertical asymptotes, the graph is either going to turn up towards positive infinity or it's going to turn down towards negative infinity. What I'm going to show you now is sign analysis. So you analyze the signs. So what I mean by that is, let's start over here on the left. Say we're approaching negative 1. We're getting really close to negative 1 from this side, okay, from the left side. Say, for example, I was to put in negative 1.1. 1 
Okay, so if I put in negative 1.1, I'm gonna put it into this factored form here. Negative 1.1 is gonna make this uh, negative 3.3 minus two, which is negative 5.3. Now I'm not so concerned about the number as I am with the sign. So that came out to a negative. A negative 1.1 plus two gives you a positive number, okay? And then over here, negative 1.1 plus one is a negative number and negative 1.1 minus one is a negative number. So we have a negative times a positive, which is a negative. A negative times a negative is a positive, and a negative divided by a positive we know is a negative number. So what that tells us is we're approaching from this side here, negative 1.1, it's going down towards negative infinity. So our graph's gonna look like that, and it's gonna gradually approach this horizontal asymptote, right? Now let's see what happens when you approach it from this side, the vertical asymptote. Say for example, you put in negative 0.9, Okay, so we're getting really close from this side. Well, if I put in negative 0.9, that's gonna make this factor here negative, okay? Uh, and then we've got negative 0.9 plus two is gonna be positive. And then we have negative 0.9 plus one, which is positive, and negative 0.9 minus one is a negative. So you can see we're getting a negative times a positive, which is a negative, and positive times a negative, which is a negative, and a negative divided by a negative, which is a positive which tells us that this graph is going up towards positive infinity. Now, if you don't like this method, you're saying, Mario, that sounds kind of confusing. You can just plug in values, like actually take that negative 1.1 or that negative 0.9 and get an actual number and plot that number, and then you'll be able to tell whether it's going up or down. This is a little bit quicker way, just analyzing the signs. Okay, so we know it's going up this way. Let's see what happens when we approach this vertical asymptote from the left side here. Well, this was um, two thirds. Let's maybe put in like, positive 0.9, so almost to one, but not quite. So if we put in positive 0.9, that would make this a positive group here, positive factor, 0.9 plus the two is gonna give us a positive, uh, 0.9 plus one is gonna be positive, 0.9 minus one is gonna be negative, so we have a positive divided by a negative, which is a negative, which tells us that this is going down. So now we can see what's happening with this graph. It looks like it's crossing the x-axis there, it's crossing the y-axis there, and then it's going and approaching those two asymptotes. Now, the last thing we wanna do is we wanna approach the vertical asymptote from this side. So for example, if I put in like positive 1.1, just a little bit to the right of this vertical asymptote, 1.1 uh, would make this positive, 1.1 plus two would make that positive, 1.1 is positive, 1.1 minus one is positive, positive divided by a positive is a positive, that tells us it's going up towards positive infinity, and then it gradually approaches that horizontal asymptote. Now, if you want, you can plot additional points you know, to get a, a better sketch. But this is a pretty good idea of what our graph is gonna look like. Thanks, Mario. In problem number two, we have f of x equals negative four divided by x squared plus two. One of the first things I like to do when sketching a rational function is to analyze the equation. Notice that in the denominator here, we have a quadratic expression, this x squared plus two. That's important because I wanna take every opportunity I can to factor the original function completely. So when we look at the denominator here, this binomial of x squared plus two, this is similar to the form of a sum of squares, which is not factorable using real numbers. So therefore, when when it comes time for me to identify what the domain of this function is, x is such that x is in the set of all real numbers. So that means that we can pick any value for x that we choose in regards to choosing a value for x to plug in to this function. Because the domain is the set of all real numbers, we're not going to have a vertical asymptote here because as you recall, in order to find the vertical asymptote, you'll need to set the denominator equal to zero. And if we were to set x squared plus two equal to zero, Solving for this, we'll be subtracting two to both sides and you'll end up with x squared equals to negative two. Now you know that squaring any value will give you a positive result, right? So if you tried to go any further, you would end up with an imaginary number here when you tried to solve for x. And due to that, you're not going to have a vertical asymptote. So the correct answer for the vertical asymptote is none. You won't have any. Now when it comes to the horizontal asymptote, Remember that anytime the degree of the numerator is less than that degree in the denominator, and in this case, you can say that our degree in the numerator is zero, whereas our degree in the denominator is two. So due to that, your horizontal asymptote will be y equals zero. Y equals zero. And keep in mind that this is where the function will be gravitating towards whether you approach negative infinity or positive infinity, but there are cases where the horizontal asymptote can be violated. Whereas if we had a vertical asymptote, then the function would never touch the vertical asymptote.
But keep in mind that you can have situations where the horizontal asymptote can be crossed. In other words, it can be touched. And if you ever want to test to see if the original function will touch the horizontal asymptote, just set the original function equal to that horizontal asymptote and see if you can get a value of x that is a real number. The next thing is the x-intercept. Well, we're not going to have an x-intercept in this case. The reason for this is because in order to find the x-intercept, you simply set the numerator equal to zero. And of course, if I say that negative four equals to zero, well, that's a false statement, right? So due to that fact, you're not going to have an x-intercept. So let's move on to finding the y-intercept. Of course, what we're doing is just trying to flesh out all of the information that we can identify from the original function. And part of that is identifying the y-intercept. In order to find the y-intercept, you simply plug in zero for all the x's in the original function and then simplify. So that means that we'll be actually finding f of zero. So we'll have negative four divided by zero squared plus two, which gives us negative four divided by two, which gives you a result of negative two. And if you were to write this value as an ordered pair, you would say that the y-intercept is zero, negative two. So before we move on, okay, I always prefer to box up my answers. It just clarifies where I can locate all the important information that I've gathered thus far. And I like to use a red box. So my domain, once again, is all real numbers for the values of x. I do not have a vertical asymptote. I know that my horizontal asymptote is y equals zero, and I don't have an x-intercept. And we found out that our y-intercept, that point, is zero, negative two. So let's continue on with our process for sketching this rational function. Now on this page, we're going to actually flesh out and graph the actual rational function. So what I want to start out with is the fact that we know that we have a horizontal asymptote of y equals zero, aka the x-axis. So I know that my rational function is going to gravitate toward this line, y equals zero, especially as we move to negative infinity, as well as to positive infinity along the x-axis. So due to that, we can definitely say that our end behavior is going to be as x approaches negative infinity, y approaches zero. And then as x approaches positive infinity, y will approach zero. So these are things that we know about the function from the end behavior, being as though as you plug in increasingly smaller x values into our function, this value once squared, the denominator is going to become huge. In fact, the denominator will approach positive infinity. So because of that, the negative 4 divided by positive infinity will give you a value very, very close to 0. The same thing applies when you plug in positive values. So for instance, if I plug in 10 or 100, this denominator will get increasingly larger as we approach positive infinity. And therefore, the overall value of this, being as though that the denominator being large going into negative 4, is going to be increasingly smaller and smaller as a value, and therefore will approach 0. So we will definitely keep those things in mind. We already know that we have a y-intercept of 0, negative 2, right? And so what I want to do is I want to plug in values that are panning away from that 0 value. So for instance, I can plug in a value like negative 1, or even I can plug in a value like negative 2. And then we can take it a step further and plug in, let's say, negative 4. And let's do the same on the opposite side of 0. So what I'm doing here is I'm creating an xy chart that I can use to graph my rational function here. And knowingly choosing values that I know are in the domain of our rational function here. So we know that our y-intercept here is at zero, negative two. Plugging in negative four, we'll have f of negative four equals to negative four divided by the quantity of negative four squared plus two. This gives me negative four divided by 16 plus two, which gives me a result of negative four eighteenths. Well, that's negative two ninths when we simplified, right? So we end up with negative two ninths here for our y value, a very small number indeed. Next, let's plug in negative two. So we'll have f of negative two equals to negative four divided by negative two squared plus two. And this equals to negative four divided by four plus two, which is negative four six. And once you simplify the negative four six, you'll end up with negative two thirds. All right, then when you plug in negative one, you'll have f of negative one equals to negative four divided by negative one squared plus two. This gives us negative four divided by one plus two, so you'll end up with negative four thirds. 
So negative 4 thirds is what we end up with for y when we plug in negative 1 into the original function. Plugging in 1, you'll have 1 squared is 1, 1 plus 2 is 3. This is also going to give you negative 4 thirds. Okay. Plugging in 2, 2 squared plus 2 is 6 in the denominator, right? Well, that gives you negative 2 thirds again. And then finally, when you plug in 4, you'll have 4 squared is 16. 16 plus 2 is 18 again. So this gives you negative 2 ninths. So we actually have some symmetry here, and we have proven that we have symmetry about the y-axis, something that we could have proven from the beginning algebraically. So let's start applying our points with negative 4 and negative 2 ninths. So at negative 4, you have negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, and negative 2 ninths is going to be almost to 0, so that's going to be about right there. And then you have negative 2, negative 2 thirds, negative 1, negative 2, and then it's almost to negative 1 here. And then you'll have a point at negative 1, negative 1 and 1 third. So negative 1, negative 1 and 1 third will give us a point right here. And then you're going to mirror that on the opposite side of y, right? So you'll have a point at 1 and 1 and 1 third. And then you'll have a point at 2, negative 2 thirds. And then you'll have a point at 4, negative 2 ninths. And anything beyond that is going to be getting increasingly closer to zero to the left, and you'll be getting increasingly closer to zero to the right. So what we'll do with these points is we'll go ahead and make a sketch that looks just like so. Just going to do this little dip here. And arrows on both ends. And there is the sketch of the graph. The final thing you may want to do is look at the range of your function. So based on our sketch here, we see that the lowest point possible in this case is going to be negative 2. So your range is going to be from negative 2, including negative 2, to 0. So for your y values, you can say that your range will be less than 0. However, it will be greater than or equal to negative 2. So written as a compound inequality, you can say that your range, your y values, are going to be between negative 2 and 0, including negative 2. And that's problem number two, guys. Okay, number three, we have f of x equals x squared plus 2x minus 3 divided by the quantity x minus 2. This is an interesting problem because notice how the degree in the numerator is higher than the degree of the highest power term in the denominator. Okay, and it's higher by one, which tells us that this is gonna be a slant asymptote, okay? But first things first, let's go ahead and factor as much as we can. So I always like to do that step first. It looks like this is gonna factor to x plus three, x minus one, all divided by x minus two. And the reason we do that is we wanna see if there's any factors that cancel numerator and denominator. If there are, we'll have holes in the graph. This particular problem doesn't have any of those removable discontinuities or those holes. So the next thing I like to do is look at the vertical asymptotes. And we can do that by setting the denominator's factors equal to zero. So if I say x minus two equals zero, add two to both sides, x equals two is gonna be our vertical asymptote right there. Okay, now, like we said originally, that you can see the degree in the numerator is higher. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do synthetic division. So if you need to, review your synthetic division. But if we're dividing by x minus two, I'm gonna put positive two right here. If it was x plus two, then I would put negative two here. Then what you wanna do is you wanna make sure your terms are in descending order. You're gonna use the coefficients, one x squared, two x, negative three. If there's any missing terms, you wanna put zeros for your placeholders, right? So you drop down that first uh, number, you multiply on the diagonal, add straight down. Multiply on the diagonal, add straight down. And so now you can see we started with x squared. When you do the synthetic division, it goes down by one degree. So we have one x plus four, plus five over x minus two. This is your remainder you put over your divisor. Now as x gets larger and larger, this term here, this remainder here, goes to zero. So you don't have to worry about that remainder. It's our uh, slant asymptote is just gonna be y equals one x plus four. So let's go ahead and put that on our graph. Y-intercept of four, one, two, three, four, it's crossing right here, has a slope of one, which means it's gonna go like here at a 45 degree angle, and it's gonna cross right here. So let me see if I can sketch this in accurately for us like that. Okay, so that's our slant asymptote. Now the next thing is we wanna find out the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts. So to find the uh, y-intercept where it crosses the y-axis, since you're not going left or right, you're gonna set the x value equal to zero. If we put zero in for x, you can see we get negative three over negative two, which is three over two, which is one and a half or 1.5. So that tells us it's gonna cross right there at 1.5. Now to find the x-intercepts, 
like we talked about in example one, you can just take the numerator's factors and set those equal to zero. So if I set x plus three equal to zero, I get negative three, one, two, negative three. If I set x minus one equal to zero and add one, we're gonna get x equals positive one. So it's gonna cross right there. Okay, the only thing left to do now is to analyze what happens when you approach the vertical asymptote from the left, the vertical asymptote from the right. Because remember, you can't cross the vertical asymptote. The graph's either gonna turn up towards positive infinity or it's gonna turn down towards a negative infinity. And here's where I like to use the sign analysis. So for example, let's say we're approaching this x equals two from the left. So I'm gonna put in 1.9. If I put in 1.9, that's gonna make this positive. 1.9 minus one is gonna be a positive. 1.9 minus two is gonna be a negative. Positive times a positive is a positive. Divided by a negative is gonna be a negative. So that means that this is going down towards negative infinity. So you can see this branch of the graph is gonna look something like that, it's gonna gradually approach that slant asymptote. Now from the right side, let's say I put in 2.1, just slightly to the right of the vertical asymptote, that's gonna make this positive, positive, positive. So positive divided by positive is a positive. That means when we're approaching from the right here, it's gonna be going up towards positive infinity, and then it's gonna be approaching your slant asymptote. So again, you can plot additional points if you wanna get a more accurate graph. In calculus, you're gonna learn how to find out exactly where these uh, minimums and maximums are, where the graph bends. But for purposes of this video, we've got a pretty good sketch. For problem number four, we'll be sketching f of x equals x squared plus three x plus two divided by x squared minus x minus two. When presented with a rational function like this, guys, you'll want to go ahead and factor as much as possible. So you wanna factor the numerator, you wanna factor the denominator. So factoring our original function here, we can rewrite it as f of x equals two factors of two that'll add to give you three or two and one. So the numerator factors into x plus two times x plus one. Then in the denominator, two factors that'll multiply to give you two and then subtract to give you the coefficient of one is two and one. However, this time you'll end up with x minus two times x plus one. Notice that you have a reducible rational function at this point, meaning that you have a factor that's identical in the numerator and the denominator, and therefore, because of this, you're gonna end up with a whole. And it'll have a whole where the factor x plus one would equal to zero. So what you'll do is, in order to find out the x value of that whole, you'll set the factor that we were able to simplify to zero and solve for it and you will find that x equals to negative one. And then to find the point where this occurs in the graph, you'll simply plug in negative one into this reduced form of our original function, which is x plus two divided by x minus two. If I were to plug in negative one into the numerator, negative one plus two is one, negative one minus two gives you a result of negative three. So that means that our whole will occur at the point negative one, negative one third. Then as far as your vertical asymptote is concerned, you wanna go back to your reduced factored form here. This x plus two divided by x minus two, and notice that we only have one factor in the denominator to set equal to zero. So that means that once you identify a whole, your whole won't also be a vertical asymptote, okay? So it's gonna be one or the other. You're either gonna have a factor that's a vertical asymptote, or you're going to have a factor that's a whole. So due to that, you'll set x minus two equal to zero, and then solving for x, you'll end up with the vertical asymptote x equals two. And of course, I like to red box it. So we're gonna be boxing up our whole, you'll need that, and of course you'll need your vertical asymptote, all right? And you might as well keep up with your factored form of the original rational function. Let's move on. The next thing we wanna do is identify the horizontal asymptote. Keep in mind that anytime the degree of the numerator, in this case it's two, is identical to the denominator's degree, which is also two, then what you can essentially do is ignore all the rest of the terms here. So if I take my function of f of x, which equals the y, by the way, and this is gonna be x squared plus three x plus two, all divided by x squared minus x minus two. And if you ignore all of the lower degree terms, then you'll end up simplifying x squared divided by x squared, which equals to one, right? So that means that our horizontal asymptote is y equals one. Yeah, that's an ugly one. Let's fix it. Much better, right? So now we have our horizontal asymptote. 
So using the numerator of our simplified form here, this x plus 2 divided by x minus 2, you'll set the numerator equal to 0 and solve for it. So in doing so, you'll have x equals to negative 2 as your x-intercept. So as a point, you'll have negative 2, 0. Yeah, when it comes to the y-intercept, you want to find out what f of 0 is. So that means that you're going to be plugging in 0 into your reduced rational function. So that means I'll have 0 plus 2 divided by 0 minus 2. So 2 divided by negative 2 is negative 1. So as an ordered pair, your y-intercept is 0, negative 1. And so, red box it. Our horizontal asymptote is y equals 1. Our x-intercept is the point negative 2, 0. And your y-intercept is the point 0, negative 1. Now let's recognize that since 2 is undefined, we'll want to find out values to the left of 2, for instance, 1 and 0, and also values to the right of 2, which we can say are 3 and 4. Now we already know we have a y-intercept of 0, negative 1, right? So that's that point. And we also know that we have an x-intercept at negative 2. So we can go ahead and put that point right here. And we are also aware of the fact that we have a horizontal asymptote at 1. So let's go ahead and show that right here. We have a horizontal asymptote of y equals to 1. Then the vertical asymptote was x equals to 2, correct? So this creates my framework for my rational function. Then I want to complete my xy chart. Plugging in 1 in the numerator, you'll have 3 over negative 1 which simplifies to negative 3. Then if I plug in 3, you'll have 5 over 1, which gives you 5. Plugging in 4, you'll end up with 6 over 2, and that gives you 3. Okay? So now, with that, along with the fact that we have a hole at negative 1, negative 1 third, which puts a hole about right there, then you have your y-intercept at 0, negative 1, like so. Then you'll have a point at 1, negative 3, so at 1, you go to negative 3. And then across the vertical asymptote, you have a point at 3, 5. 3 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then you also have a point at 4, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, and then up 3. All right. You should be aware that this form of your rational function is similar to the parent function, f of x equals to 1 over x, which is normally like this. All right you can then graph the following function like so. You'll have it looking like this to the right, and you're going to have that hole there. So make sure you're not going through the hole. The hole needs to be just that. It needs to be a hole in the graph, guys. And that completes your sketch. You'll say that as x approaches negative infinity, y approaches 1, and as x approaches positive infinity, y approaches 1. So that'll be the end behavior for problem number four, as well as your sketch of the rational function. Okay, number five, we have f of x equals 2x over the quantity x squared plus 3. Now, the first thing you want to do, like I say in the other examples, is you want to factor as much as you can, but this particular problem, you can't factor at all, all right? So the next thing I like to do is I look, like to look at the vertical asymptotes. So to find the vertical asymptotes, what you want to do is you want to set that denominator equal to zero, or the factors if you factored it, set each factor equal to zero. So if I subtract three from both sides and I take the square root to get x by itself, you see we can't take the square root of a negative number without getting imaginary numbers. So what that tells us is, is that there's not going to be any vertical asymptotes in this particular graph. So that's very interesting. Now the other thing that's interesting about this problem is that you see how the highest degree term in the denominator, see how that degree is higher than the highest degree term in the numerator? When you have that situation where the degree in the bottom is higher than the degree in the top, the horizontal asymptote is going to be y equals 0, which is right at the x-axis. So I'm going to draw this a little bit on a diagonal so it stands out from the x-axis like so. Okay, so we'll just write over here y equals 0. That's our horizontal asymptote. Okay, the next thing I like to do is I like to go to the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts. So to find the y-intercept where it crosses the y-axis, we put 0 in for x because you're not going left or right. If I put 0 in for x, you can see we're going to get 0 over 3, which is just 0. So our y-intercept is going to be right here at the origin, at 0. And if we want to find the x-intercept, what you can do is you can set the factors in the numerator equal to 0. But if we set 2x equal to 0 and divide both sides by 2, you can see we're also getting 0. So it's crossing the y-axis and the x-axis at the same point right here at the origin. 
So now at this point, this is kind of interesting because we don't have those vertical asymptotes. We just have this horizontal asymptote. And remember, you might be thinking to yourself, well, Mario, this is an asymptote. Why is there a point right on the asymptote? Well, remember, you can cross a horizontal asymptote. You can cross a slant asymptote. You just can't cross a vertical asymptote because then you'd be dividing by zero. So the only thing really left for us to do now is to make a table and kind of look at what happens, you know, to the left and the right of this point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick some uh, points like negative 4, negative 2, positive 2, positive 4. Okay, so let's put in uh, negative 4. Negative 4 will give us negative 8 over 19. So that's negative 8 19 If we put positive 4 in, it's going to be positive 8 over 16 plus 3, which is 19. So that's positive 8 19 If we put in negative 2, we get negative 4 over 7. If we put in positive 2, we're going to get positive 4 7 Okay, so now if we plot these points, let's see what we have. So at negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 8 19 Negative um, 8 19 is a little bit less than negative a half. Okay, so it's going to be basically right uh, here. Okay, just uh, estimating. Okay, this is a, hand, a graph. Positive 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 8 19 is going to be a little bit less than half right there. And then if we put in a negative 2, negative 4 7, this is a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit more than negative. Uh, so negative 4 7 is a little bit uh, greater than. Well, 4 sevenths is greater than a half is what I mean to say. So basically, this is going to be a little bit lower than halfway. So that's going to be right about here. Okay. And then over here at 2, 4 sevenths, that's going to be a little bit more than a half. So it's going to be a little bit more than halfway, like so. So if you can see what's happening here, I might have exaggerated a little bit, but the graph's going up. And then it gradually starts to settle back down as it goes out to the right. See, it's approaching that horizontal asymptote. Same thing here. See, it's crossing the x-axis, okay, that horizontal asymptote. It dips down, but then it starts to gradually make its way back up. So it's kind of like a S-shape, I guess you could say. So that's a kind of an interesting graph where it crosses the horizontal asymptote, but as you go to the right and the left end of the graph, it approaches that horizontal asymptote. All right, guys, for our final problem, number six, we have f of x equals x minus 3 divided by x squared minus 4x plus 3. And once again, our task is to sketch the rational function. So what we'll be doing first is attempting to factor the original function. It does appear that the denominator is factorable. That is a quadratic trinomial. And we would be looking for two factors of 3 that would add to give us 4. Well, in that case, we can use 3 and 1. So that means that we'll factor this into x minus 3 times x minus 1, as those are the two factors that would multiply to give us positive 3, and then at the same time combine to give you a result of negative 4, which is your middle term in the denominator. Then you would want to identify any holes that you may have. Now, keep in mind that anytime you have an identical factor in the numerator and in the denominator, those are going to be holes within your graph. And as it turns out, we can simplify, we can cancel out those x minus 3s. That'll leave us with 1 over x minus 1. And this is not only going to be our factored form, but our reduced form of the rational function, this 1 divided by x minus 1. When it comes to finding the point where our hole occurs, you'll set the factor that was canceled out to 0. So you'll have x minus 3 equal to 0. Go ahead and add 3 to both sides of your equation to find out that x equals to 3. So it's when x equals to 3 that you'll end up having a hole within your function. So remember, you would be plugging in 3 into the simplified form of your rational function. So as we plug in 3 into this problem, you'll have 1 over 3 minus 1, which gives you 1 half. So our point where the hole occurs is at 3, 1 half. And remember that we'll find the vertical asymptote by setting the remaining factors that are in the reduced form of your rational function. You'll set those to 0 in order to find the vertical asymptotes. So we'll have x minus 1 equals 0. And then by adding one of both sides of the equation, you'll have x equals 1. And this is going to be your vertical asymptote red box it. So we'll box up our reduced form of the rational function. We'll box up the fact that we'll have a hole at 3, 1 half and that our vertical asymptote is going to be x equals 1. We'll now look for our horizontal asymptote. 
Now, our horizontal asymptote is going to be found the same way as before. We identify the degree of the numerator, which in this case is 0, because we just have a constant, and the degree of the denominator. Remember, the degree is the exponent on your variable x. Okay, So in the denominator, our exponent on the variable x is 1. So you have a degree of 0 in the numerator, a degree of 1 in the denominator, and any time the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, that means that your horizontal asymptote will be y equals 0. So that's what we have. y equals 0 as a horizontal asymptote. When it comes to finding the x-intercept, you're not going to have one. Nah, you're not going to have one. Because 1 equals 0 is a contradictory statement. That's why. Yeah, 1 doesn't equal to 0. So it's not possible to find your x-intercept. You'll normally find your x-intercept, guys, when you have at least a variable in the numerator that you can solve for. In order to find the y-intercept, you find out what f of 0 is. And you can do this with your simplified form. So f of 0 equals to 1 divided by 0 minus 1, which gives us 1 divided by negative 1, which is negative 1. So as a point, your y-intercept is going to be 0, negative 1. Red box it. So we have a horizontal asymptote, y equals 0. You will not have an x-intercept, and you will have a y-intercept at 0, negative 1. All right, let's go ahead and try to put everything together. The first thing I'll probably want to do is set up my framework, starting out with the asymptotes. We know that we're going to have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. That means that the x-axis is now off limits. And then, as far as the vertical asymptote is concerned, you'll have a vertical asymptote at x equals to 1. Just like this, guys. All right. Now, mind you, I did tell you guys earlier that when you have a rational function in this form here, that parent function, that f of x equals to 1 over x, will give you a graph like this, right? Okay. So basically, this says that as x approaches negative infinity, y will be approaching 0. And as x approaches positive infinity, y will be approaching 0 in this case. And then the next thing we'll do, we'll want to find out as many points as possible. We do know that we have a hole at 3, 1 half, so let's identify that. So at 3, got a hole right there at 1 half. And then we're going to want to know values to the left and right of our vertical asymptote. Remember that when x equals to 1, the function is undefined. So that means that I want to find out values such as 0 or negative 1, and then also 2 and 3, as far as plugging these values into the reduced form of our rational function in order to sketch it. So plugging in 0, of course, we already did that, didn't we? The answer was negative 1. That's our y-intercept. Then, plugging in negative 1, you'll end up with negative 1 half as a result. And then, plugging in 2, you'll end up with 1. And then, plugging in 3, you'll end up with 1 half, which is where our hole is, by the way. Let's make note of that. Okay. When x is a 3, you'll be at your hole. So, let's go ahead and find out one more point. If we plug in 4, you'll have 1 third as a point. All right, so let's go ahead and flesh this out, guys. You're going to have the negative 1, negative 1 half. So at negative 1, I'm at negative 1 half. That's a point right here. Then 0, I'm at negative 1. And then we have our vertical asymptote here. Then at 2, I'm at positive 1. And then at 4, I'm at 1 third, which is about right here. And based on our parent function, we know that our end result here is going to be the following. You will have a graph that looks just like this. It will be approaching our asymptotes, not touching the hole at all, okay? And basically having the shape of our parent function for a rational function here. And that completes problem number six. I appreciate you guys letting me crash Mario's math tutoring channel today. And I appreciate you guys for the opportunity. So a great big thank you to Fort Bend Tutoring for working together with me to produce this video for you. Go ahead and subscribe to his channel and go over to his channel and check out some of the many math tutoring videos that he has available for you. Hope you enjoyed this video. Look forward to seeing you in the next one.